Hello, hello, test, test, test. So, I have good news. It's really a breakthrough in my life. Big things in motion, big happenings. You know, uh, this dadgum uh, pile of leaves I was talking about. Well, I finally uh, uh, mustered the strength to uh, rake them up. Not into a pile, like multiple piles, but actually like pick up the piles and put them in a bin. After two, uh, two years of going outside ever peri periodically, uh, periodically, just kind of looking at him sometimes and being like, hmm, I don't really think I'm going to do this today after raking them up again. Because I stopped doing them two year two summers ago. And they were all, sp I would rake up the sticks. And then I'd go, you know, smoke some drugs or do something because I wasn't angry. I couldn't look at the sticks anymore. And then I'd come back and they would be spread all over the yard. All the sticks that I had just raked up into a piles. So it was, it was like, I actually thought, you know, the Illuminati, fake, fake Illuminati neighbors were uh, messing with me. I literally thought that they were going around the yard and grabbing all the piles and throwing them all over the yard after I was... Uh, I didn't, I couldn't muster the strength to put them into a bin or something, a wheelbarrow. Because I wanted to do some drugs, because I was angry about uh, my, state of, my state of affairs. So I thought that one of my neighbors was waiting for me to leave the backyard. And then he'd go to the backyard and pick up all the sticks and throw them all over the yard, so I had to rake them up again. So that's why I stopped doing the yard. I said, all right, fuck this. I'm not going to fucking rake any of this shit up. Nobody else fucking does anything for this fucking property. Except one guy. The Lotto Witch. And yes. I let the piles uh, fester over the winter. And I had, I had three really big piles that I had on the the back side of the property by the fence where the neighbor lady keeps a pile, a pile of all of her dead stuff. So there's like two fences. It's a really retarded setup. Doesn't make any sense. She has her fence, like a regular chain link fence. And then there's like a space, like six feet between another shitty, like wire fence. So there's, she has two fences. Apparently that's her property, the, the, the six feet of land in between the two fences. I got mad at her last year and yelled at her because I was trying to clean up all the sticks and the dead brush in between the two fences, and she, she was not having it. She didn't like that at all. She, no, that's mine. That's, that's my property. Those are my sticks. That's my dead leaves. Just piling and piling like, and there's like plant species from different countries growing in that six feet of land. They're just like dead brush and all that kind of shit growing like 
I'm not even kidding, like plant species that I've never even seen before. I don't think anybody in Brazil has seen these plant species and they live in like the Amazonian jungle. They've lived there all their life in a tribe and they that's where the the plant is like native to. They haven't seen it. That's possibly because uh, some white dude wanting to spread the word of God showed up to their little tribe and they've never seen an outsider before in their life, their tribe, in the woods, the jungle. Woods or jungle? When does the woods become the jungle? Because there's a, there's a shift there, right? Yeah, there's a shift there. Of, uh... Of, um... Like, where you call the woods, the woods. But then eventually, when you get more south, it becomes the jungle. Which is an interesting shift. Much like the shift in my mindset uh, in terms of the piles. Last year, after a year had passed, well, two years ago, I said, when I started raking the, the sticks up, I said, you know what I'm going to do just for, uh, uh, just for my free time in between work? And uh, because I want to be a good neighbor, I want to be a good dude, I want to help the property look nice, I said, I'm going to rake all this shit up and buy, like, mulch out of my pocket and mulch the backyard, mulch the property, uh, maybe even plant some plants. I've compartmentalized this part of my uh, memories pretty well. It's ingrained in there pretty deep. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make this property look really fucking nice because that's what I want to do. I want it to look nice. This is two summers ago. And after uh, a couple days of raking up dead sticks everywhere and dead leaves, dead grass, all that mumbo jumbo. And every time I would leave the piles, because I, you know, was up in my head, stuck about... Uh, Stuck up in my head about uh, whatever the fuck was I, what I thought was a problem back then. And I, uh, <laughs> after seeing the piles of sticks picked up, and thrown all over the yard multiple times, I said, fuck this shit, I'm not doing this anymore. This is what I get for trying to make the property look nice. It's fucking bullshit. So then I, uh, just let the piles sit there over the winter. And if you let, like, a bunch of dead brush and dead sticks, like, pile up on the grass when the snow's on top of it, it kills the grass for when, when the snow all melts and all the green grass shows up and the piles, if you lift the piles up, if you eventually get to them a year later, a year after that moment, which is a year after I started with the piles, I thought it was kind of funny at that point. I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave the piles the way they are. (laughs) I thought it would be uh, funny for the neighbors to, like, come outside and be like, wasn't he, didn't he say he was going to rake this shit up last year? No, he's doing it, oh, he's doing it now. All right, never mind. He must have just forgot about him and got angry at uh, whatever uh, was going on in his head because he's uh, talking and screaming sometimes. But, hey, that's the state of the world. He's doing them right now, though. He's raking up. This is a year ago. Over a year ago. This is what the neighbors are saying. They're like, man, thank God. It kind of looks like shit back there. 
And at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, it would be funny. I just left these piles. There's like in the piles of dead sticks, there's like dozens of new plants growing through the fucking piles of dead brush. It looks like a. It looks like the oil. it's overgrowing all the fucking plants and all the leaves from all the trees which weren't there two years ago. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to. I'm going to come out here every once in a while, rake up some more sticks that have been thrown all over the yard by nobody because my neighbor, I found out now that my neighbors were never doing that. That's when I came to the simulation theory idea. Because who would think, oh, God is moving all these sticks around in, in the piles to test Hayden. He's paying for sins, or yada yada. And uh, who would think that God is doing that? And it wasn't hell back then. It's not hell now. It's never going to be hell even if silence, because it wasn't hell for the two months of silence. So we're going to do that. I'd rake the piles up. I lost my phone out in the yard for like four days. So nothing got done during that time period. This is back when I was, you know, working. And even back, uh, even back then, I was uh, shifting my beliefs from uh, Illuminati neighbors to, uh, I don't even know at that point. That was when the voices stopped in the fall. But I have come to you today to tell you that Two days ago, I'm just now talking about it. I'm just now uh, proud of myself for raking up all the dead grass. I had piles of dead grass all summer, this summer. I just kept rake, going out there, raking them up, and being like, oh, f every time I would just start thinking about shit, I'd be like, oh, fuck me. God damn it. And go get high. And then I wouldn't go back to the the piles of dead grass. Because I thought it was funny. My neighbor kept bringing it up. He's like, so there's still, like, dead brush over over on the side of the... You going to get to that? I'm like, yeah, I'll do, I'm going to do that right now. This was like two months ago. They're still not, they're still not picked up. <laughs> Those ones I didn't get to yet. So I, and the ones from two years ago I didn't get to either. So I didn't really rake up everything yet. <laughs> I just raked up the dead grass and I started raking this summer. So I didn't even get to the piles that I started two years ago. <laughs> but I raked up the dead grass piles so we're good there and I got a whole pile of like dead uh, trees and sticks that is in another spot in the backyard that I haven't removed yet either so yeah I'm, not te I'm technically not done raking but I did the dead grass piles, which sh probably shouldn't have been there. Because they, they would pile up when it would rain. You know, they'd sit there, and when it rains, when you have a pile of fucking, like, dead brush and dead grass on top of live grass, it kills the grass below the pile there. So then I have to rake up another patch of dead grass due to leaving the pile. And then I'd like move it to another spot. Of 
<laughs> of green grass. And then it would rain again. And then it would kill that grass. <laughs> and I finally got those piles up. I can say, you know, I'm very proud of myself. I did something. I finished a project. I finished one. And no, I didn't. Uh, I don't know if I want to do the sticks this year. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can get to it. I got a lot on my mind, a lot on the docket upstairs in the mind frame. But I finally got the dead grass piles. So who's who's to, uh, sitting on their ass wondering like uh, just Satan even do anything? What does he do? What does he do? I distract Satan for your asses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, "Oh, if this is hell, then the voices would st would stop and uh, Satan." wouldn't even need to talk because it would just be hell. Which is why the voices haven't stopped because then if they stop, then it actually becomes hell for Hayden. No, how about just, uh, maybe I'm wrong about some of my takes and not everything should be projected into reality in weird, gay ways like that. Huh, maybe that should be the thing. Because that's all based off of the fake coma dream. It's what it is. I'll tell you like it is. And, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, that's the other realization I've come to. If you, uh, are, you know, listening to any of my episodes and you're wondering, like, huh, is God, uh, is this... Is it purgatory? Is it my purgatory? Is that where that flash of memories came from, from a different life, different emotions that I've never felt or experienced? A life that I lived, that uh, I definitely lived? So this is my purgatory. So maybe, maybe that's why I have schizophrenia. Maybe God is inserting schizophrenia into uh, my life to help me purge my sins and pay for my sins so I can ascend into the light and stay there like a fucking smart little human. Like Hayden said on the Because podcast, he told me to stay in the light. Well, I didn't. The first time. Now I'm coming to the realization that I have all these mental illnesses, but I don't. Because of a fake coma dream, car accident. Well, it's better than the, the latter. It's much better than uh, the alternative. And the latter in the alternative is uh, you actually have mental illness. Because your brain's just that fucked. So you could be that. You could be a human with real mental, real mental illness. Whose brain chemistry is so fucking fucked up. That you need a lobotomy. So look at the bright side. God's just. Helping you pay for your sins so you can get to heaven, you dummy. Or you should be on Shutter Island. You should be running Shutter Island. Like when the, all the inmates or patients, they fucking have a riot and they kill all the fucking workers there. You should be the one who runs Shutter Island after that. 
You should be the one. Like the leader of the Shutter Island uh, riot crew. So, look at your mental illness in that way. It's just God helping you through purgatory so you can get to heaven. And if you think, what the fuck? So God can do this or do that? Or maybe Hayden's right, maybe Hayden's wrong. Maybe Hayden is actually just severely mentally ill. Or maybe I'm not. What's better? Paying for your sins with some uh, mental illness, a few of them, like seven of them? From God? Or actually being so fucked up in the head and your brain chemistry is so fucking... You need to be rewired in every single aspect of your brain chemistry. That uh, you literally, you could write the DSM 6th uh, edition yourself. Because you know all about all the mental illnesses ever. All of them. So you can just write about them as like an autobiography. Because the DSM 6 is probably coming out soon. The DSM 5 it came out uh, like... Over 10 years ago, I think. I think they're coming out with the sixth one soon. So you, they can just take your journal entries and use that as the DSM-6. As like a first-hand experience, first-hand account of what every single mental illness is like. Like for real. Not from God, not from paying for your sins, but just because you're fucked. And there's no hope for you. So that's why you have mental illness, you fucking dummy. God's trying to help you. Or, if you are not too uh, um, open-minded to that possibly wrong idea, but from Hayden, probably right. You could be... Uh, what the hell did I just say? Or you could be... I remembered what because I just listened to it again. Or you could be the DSM 6th edition. You could be the book. <laughs> you could have bad memory. Or, and extensive brain damage. Maybe a tumor that's affecting that as well. Drugs having an, having an effect. All those things compiled, compiled could uh, definitely be the reason for your memory loss. Short term, long term, etc. Or, you could be uh, plopped into a fake coma dream. With a fake simulation. Where uh, AI, who's reading your mind and reading your rights, brings up the fact that you keep forgetting things because the simulation is erasing your memory. Which is probably possibly part of your reality solely because of a fake coma dream. Which is actually God doing all of this. Or... You could have all of the mental illnesses and not be paying for any sins. Tomato, tomato. Potato, potato. Which one do I choose? Do I want to be, uh, just blame it all on purgatory? God. That's the better one. It's better than uh, self-reflecting and uh, admitting to yourself that you have a serious mental issue. God's just helping me pay for my sins. So I can go to heaven. 
the uh, from the fake coma dream. Fake coma dream, fake coma dream, fake coma dream. <sighs> That's why you're hearing voices, you fucking silly goose. So, what have we learned? In uh, Schizophrenia 101. We have learned what? That nobody in the world is mentally ill and we're all just paying for sins. Boom! I could be wrong. I could be... The... The latter. That's what's so ironic about all this. I could be right. Or I could be that. I could be leading Shutter Island right now. I'm just hallucinating everything visually. And I'm actually at the island. <laughs> but I'm just seeing my environment uh, differently than I, uh, than I actually should be. You know, I was uh, thinking about uh, my childhood growing up and all the fun shenanigans I'd get into. The fun little shenanigans with the friends. And I'll tell this story. Uh, I, just, I just did uh, a little bit of cocaine, so I feel like I get... Uh, like very stimulated and like almost too high to like even do anything. Even just to like sit here and smoke cigarettes and talk into a microphone, I'm almost like, Jesus, fuck. I feel like I should be like doing road construction or something. Not the one in Alaska where the lady holds the sign where you gotta, because they only let in Alaska, they have on the freeway, most of the like the freeway, even it's just like a two lane road, one car on each side. So, when they're doing construction on these long stretches of highway in Alaska, it's the only road like that you can get from like town to town. Not e there's not even any side roads. That's called the wilderness, you fucking... That's the woods. They'll have somebody holding up a sign that says stop for one of the lanes. So, like, if you're driving to uh, Hope, Alaska to go fishing, that's a nice little stretch. There's a nice uh, river uh, mouth that goes into the ocean there. And the, it's really shallow, so you can see all the salmon swimming. It's really fucking shallow. It's really easy to just snag them. Which is illegal. But not if you do it right. You just can't be, you know, yanking your pole super uh, obnoxiously. Just trying to snag a fucking salmon in the side of the belly and hook them there. Which it's illegal to keep salmon fish that are, that are snagged. A lot of Alaska State Troopers, they thought they... Fucking troopers are like watching fishers with binoculars. And the one... The one, uh... Dad is like teaching and he... You can just see it on the fucking... Cam on the camera, on the episode. The one dad is like teaching his son how to snag. He's like... He's like, this is what you do. You just yank the pole as hard as you can without even uh, feeling a bite. So you can just snag them right in the side. 
<laughs> my one uncle who uh uh took a break on life permanently he said that that life uh that living thing really ain't for me right now so i'm gonna be done doing that he used to do the most obnoxious fucking snag yank. Like, so obnoxious. Like, you could tell he was just trying to snag a fucking salmon. He would do it all the time. He didn't give a shit. He was teaching his kid. Well, your kid, uh... I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. He's probably pretty good at snake and salmon now. Back then it was 55 for every river for his family. For him, his wife, and his two kids. I don't know what their limit is now. I don't think it's 55. Yeah, so, <laughs> crazy. I just got off the ringer with her. It took me like a day and a half to get a hold of her, the, the broad up in Alaska. And, you know, imagine that. And one of the four people in your family uh, is no longer a part of the family. Your salmon count per river goes down. You don't get to keep 55 from every river. That's just dip netting. So she's got to teach little kids how to uh, dip net at age three. A dip net's like a big, wide net. It's big enough for you, it's small enough for you to like be able to handle with uh, your arms and you know your body. But it's not, it's not like a, like on a fishing rig where you have a, like thousands of fish in there. No, you just hold it in your hand. You stick it in the water uh, when they're coming upstream. And usually you, you want to wait until uh, there's like a nice flood, like a nice rain, nice storm passes through because that over floods the rivers and the salmon actually like stop. They'll chill in the same spot of the river for like a day or two to let the rain pass because the water's too strong to swim up while it's raining. Because, you know, the currents are too fast. It'd just be a waste of energy for the salmon. And the salmon return to the exact same spot that they were born, where their, where their little egg was dropped. Even if it's 200 miles from the ocean. I don't know why. Seems like a bit of a overachieving type of thing. Like, you know, you can just plop them right here by the ocean. That way the, the little ones don't have to swim that far. It makes the most sense to me. Not the smartest fish in the world, I'll tell you that. So most of them uh, get eaten or by humans or bears. And yeah, she told me they don't have 55 in every river now. Well, it's, I mean, I didn't really ask about much else. I was just mostly focused on the amount of fish after your husband uh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It's probably psy out into the next dimension, into another universe and galaxy. You know? Freedom, man. Freedom is a tricky, tricky thing. If you give people too much of it, they start running around town, uh, blowing, uh, blowing loads into each other. I'm talking about cum and, like, 
Imagine loading up, like, with your mind, a uh, batch of drugs into somebody's, like, immune system and, like, their uh, bodily system, whatever the fuck it's called. What the fuck was I going to say about... Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a interesting place to go and uh, just be probably a murderer. Most people who move up there are not uh, going there to, uh, you know, meet people. They're not there to, uh, like, check out the nice architecture downtown. The skyscrapers. No, it's a uh, pretty. Uh, I don't even know if they have any women that are uh, like above a seven. No, those are the ones that get murdered. By the dudes who just moved to Alaska to get away, quote unquote. No, all the attractive ones have been murdered. They've been removed from the the premises of Alaska state lines, the border. That's why, uh, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was going to say, once I get, if I get married and have kids. <laughs> yeah. If I get married and have kids. Which was my, you know, that would be, that was like my response most of my life growing up. I would... You know, we got kids. What the fuck am I going to have a kid for? They cost too much money. Plus Santa's going to come uh, down the chimney every year and rape them, probably. Plus he's watching them when they're naked, alone, all the time. Kind of like God. God and Santa are like communists, like to the max. You know? Because I don't know about what other people's views on what on God and what he can do, what he can't do, uh, like how he uh, is able to check in on everybody all at once, yet not really do much to like make the state of affairs of the world and society much better. But I always find it, I always found it, uh, not a, you know, I just find it odd that Santa Claus comes, the old grandpa pedophile who hates the Constitution, on Jesus' birthday, who Jesus' enemy or whatever was, uh, Satan is Satan. Santa, Satan, on Jesus' birthday. Doesn't make sense. Well, I'm just trying to, like, I might have to do some research on uh, the origin, the origination of Santa Claus. And... Also, Mrs. Claus as well. I'm not sure what she does uh, to help Santa around the house. I'm guessing she cooks and cleans and... I can't. 
What else would what else would she do? Not just her, like I'm not saying she's lazy. What else would any woman do ever in any household? Cook, clean. What's the other one I'm looking for? Do the laundry. That counts as cleaning, technically. You're cleaning the clothes. Duh, dummy. Um, no, doing the dishes is cleaning. Um, feeding the dog. Oh, there's a third one. Feeding the dog. Uh, that's cleaning up like preemptively beforehand before the dog gets a little too hungry and decides to take a bite out of your thigh because you don't feed it any food. So that's preemptive cleaning, proactive, preventing a cleanup incident in the future. You know that if you die in your house, and you have a cat, the cat will actually like start eating you. Especially when it doesn't have any food. A dog will too. Some breeds won't do it. That's what I've heard. Maybe it's, maybe it's time to test it out. Should I go get a, should I go snatch up a cat or, and a dog off the street? Shit, I'm not in Thailand. Not in the Philippines either. Fuck. So, or Japan, any of them really. Not North Korea. No. They, uh, they don't let dogs in or out of the country. Should I snatch up a nice big mutt and a fat little cat? Off the street, house them, take them in, not to eat them. But to see if they'll eat me. What, what if I play dead? I wonder if they would be able to tell if I was playing dead or if I was uh, alive still. I'm sure they could see me breathing, but what if they just walked away because they didn't really give a shit about my corpse because they I just snatched them up off the street. They weren't even homeless. Like, the owner was letting them take a piss outside. The cat, too. But I wonder if they would even give a shit long enough to... Because I'd have to hold my breath while the dog is, like, licking my face. And because I don't want to give the impression that I'm still alive. So you have to hold your breath so your stomach isn't moving. There's no airflow coming out of your nostrils and your mouth. You have to have your eyes closed, obviously. And every time a human dies, uh, they shit and piss themselves. All their shit and piss uh, empties their body. So. You'd have to probably do that as well to really sell it. You know, because then the dog would be like, oh, I've, yeah. All the homeless guys uh, in our alley, the alley that I live in as a dog, all the homeless guys, uh, this is what happens to them when they get a little too uh, fucked up, when they have one of those things hanging out of their arms. What are those? Oh, he's the dog is thinking to himself. What are those again? Uh, oh yeah, I stepped on one the other day. Got got me really fucked up.
and uh, and I'm like, the dog's thinking to himself, he's like, man, shit and piss again, huh? Well, give it another, uh, you know, what, what, what month is it? He checks the calendar. Oh, it's June. No good. That means they're going to start cooking. I'm going to start cooking. Like, St. Paul Public Housing. That is a true story, by the way. My coworker at Minneapolis Public Housing, he he was a journeyman, so he worked at all the uh, high rises for public housing in St. Paul. You know, he just go to whatever you know, high rise needed work done, maintenance work or whatever. And he showed up to this one high rise where these two guys, because like at every high rise in St. Paul, I don't know if it's the same for St. Paul, but I'm guessing it's pretty similar. But for Minneapolis, you basically have at least one, probably two, uh, maintenance guys or a woman uh, that stay like permanently at one building, usually, unless the help is needed elsewhere. So usually at, at one high rise, which is anywhere from, I mean, there's probably at least at least 50 to 60 or 70 uh, people living in every high rise at least. So there's at least one SMS, SMS uh, service maintenance spe specialist at each of the high rises. And then there's usually uh, at least one BGS, which is like, uh, the position lower in terms of qualifications and experience, etc. Once you're working as a BGS for like uh, probably a year and a half, maybe two, you can move up to SMS, which I was about to do that. I'd be making at least 27 an hour probably 28, 29 by now, and then uh, you get 14 uh, paid vacation, or paid holidays, excuse me. 14 paid holidays. So you get paid to chill and sit on your ass. You get, you start out with three weeks paid vacation, and then you move to uh, five. So after the five, after you get, like, after you do enough to, after you do enough time in the clink, you uh, move up from three weeks paid vacation to five. So that would be 35 days. Add 14 paid holidays. You get 49 paid days off a year. Which is pretty badass. Well, it was. You got life insurance, dental, health insurance. They just take it out of your paycheck, a little bit of here and there. It's really worth it. Your entire family can have health insurance. <laughs> family. That's right. Family. I wouldn't know about any of that business. Not lately. I just saw like uh like one of the sleeves on my sweatshirts. It's like on the you know like those racks that you hang on the back of your door. 
Dude, I just saw a sleeve. Like somebody, it looked like somebody picked up one of the sleeve, like pulled it out towards the middle of the room and just threw it back at the fucking door. There's nobody here. Anyways. I was, uh, this woman who claims to be, uh, one of my family members. She claims to be, uh, we're like family. We're family. What, what have we known each other for? Five years? She's like 5,500 years old. Family. A real beast of a troll woman. She looks like a... Like a troll. You know? Like, have you ever seen The Nightman Cometh? C-O-M-E-T-H. From It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The Nightman Cometh. Yes, O meth. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, well, Frank's character fucking plays like a troll in that in that episode and he uh she resembles him pretty much spot on. While they're doing like costume changes, she could literally just walk out there in with no makeup and really no kind of wardrobe at all. And people would buy it. And, um, I mean, they'd probably think that, uh, she's better at singing. No, she's not. She's not good at anything. She's good at, uh, being, a like a sow. If you don't know what a sow is, just look that up. Do some research on sows for a while. Sow. Animal. It's an animal. The female version of a pig. I actually thought it was a cow. You know, a sow cow. But no, it is uh, a female pig is called a sow. <clears throat> Just so you know. S O W. So W. Dude, I don't know what this whole W obsession. I don't even know what the fuck. I don't even, like, I was just listening to Rob Thomas, Smooth. And it's, like, one of those songs that I haven't heard in a while. I was like, what the fuck? The ocean and the moon, huh? Yeah, that sounds about right. Can you imagine, like, a pig trying to swim around in the ocean? Can pigs even swim? Sows. Can sows swim? Swim. Not cows. Sows. Not cows. God damn it. Can pigs swim? Can they swim in water? Uh, no. I was looking for, like, Dr. Pepper. I wanted to see if pigs could swim in Dr. Pepper. And Mountain Dew Infinite Swirl. 
Not water, you fucking dumbass. Fucking search engine. Duck, duck, go. Duck, duck, go. Duck, duck, go. Apparently, pigs are excellent swimmers. They can cross water to seek food sources, escape danger, and find better habitat. Some pigs, like the feral pigs in the Bahamas, have been observed swimming with tourists. Oh, tourists. I know that game. Well, from I watch from a distance, the tourists. Anyways, uh, what was I going to fucking talk about? Oh, yeah, the fucking brood of a woman. She looks like a... Like a witch and a troll and a, sa and a sow mixed together. And they plopped out her. And after 50 plus years of tattoo, like shitty tattoos, dyeing her hair all the time, bitching about everything, that's what you get. You get a sow. One that will come into your apartment talking about the neighbor's got a gun and he's going to shoot somebody and don't let anybody in my apartment as she's coming into my apartment. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> don't let anybody in. Don't let anybody in. Oh my God. I'm like, what? She just comes in and starts rummaging through all my shit all the time. She'll just go through all of my sh like, everything. She'll walk around my room and just, like, start pulling shit from under the bed. And looking through it. And that doesn't put anything back. So, she's a pig. She's a pig. She's a little, well, not a little, a decent sized pig. I don't know what the record where it was at the state fair this year. I didn't attend again. No, I, uh, you know, I thought about going and I'm like, oh shit, that's right. <laughs> I don't have a car. I don't have a phone. And I haven't sold, a, I haven't listed a lot of things on my Facebook marketplace or anything. One, because I don't have a phone and I just haven't really fixed it. So I can't really take pictures of the shit that I have to sell. And, you know, I just haven't really gotten around to fixing some of the electronics. I had a, I have an iPhone sitting on my desk right here. And I pulled out the SIM card. And it's like a... Uh, it's... Uh, you know, I left it on my desk for a week or two, or I don't know, a couple months. Who, know, who even knows anymore what fucking time period it was. And the SIM card is still there with the little, uh, you know, like the little... Um, like ejector uh, place placement holder thing like the little you know you stick the paper clip in the hole and you pull it out like the uh disc tray but for an sd card or sim card i had the same tray same sim card it was not a different sim card because it was connected to the tray still i think well there wasn't any other sim card that looked like this that i had you understand? So, it's the same phone, same tray, but after a couple of weeks of just sitting on my desk because uh, my mind is like, I mean, I'm not going to make excuses, you know what I mean? But when things like this happen, it kind of like over and over, like dozens and maybe over a hundred, couple hundred times in terms of like everything in my life. 
when things like this happen, the SIM card grew in size. I'm not, I'm right hand on the Bible. I'm telling the truth, Jesus and God. It grew in size to the point where I can't even fit it. It's too big to fit in this SIM card slide out tray. You know the little th hole that you pull the, stick a paper clip in there and you pull the fucking s tray out. And then uh, 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 some some of the trays have two slots, one for a big one. I don't even think this one's big enough for the big one, the big slot though. The SIM card literally like grew, it grew up. It got a little bigger. It started lifting. Unlike me, it. I'm not joking. I'm not. No. How? My dick can't even grow. It just can't. I can't really get, uh, you know, above like 160, 165 in terms of body weight. No, even when I was eating a lot of food. And now I don't have an appetite most days. And if I do, I'm like, oh, what's the point? Maybe I'll uh, see the light if, I'm not, if I don't have anything in my stomach. I, I'm back on, the, yeah, the water fast thing. I haven't been keeping track of days, but I know it's at least two weeks. Maybe closer to three. Nineteen, I think. I've been seeing the, the letter S and the number 19 a lot lately. So that explains that. I was wondering why that was. Never anything to do with, like, winning the lottery or... Not even, like, a $500 pick three. Which is a dollar. And the cool thing about the pick three in Minnesota is it's actually really cool. If you can win, if you know you're going to win. And I had a bit on episode 25. I had a fucking like, I had went into like a 45 minute fucking story about the lottery. It was honestly one of my favorite uh, recorded pieces of audio of all time. And I'm going to have to listen again, but it's, uh, it's been removed. Not by me. I hope this isn't the case for everybody else in the world. But it's been removed. The very last half of uh, How to Be a Full-Time Crocodile episode. I just talk about me how I was trying to win the lottery last year around this time. Pretty much all day, every day for 150 days, I just go into like, uh, st like my experience with that, and how after like day 40, you're like starting to lose your shit. So you got 90 days. Like I didn't even know at the time how long I was going to be doing this, but like anytime I would see a number, I'd be like, okay, three. It's 3:22 p.m. right now. Three plus 22 is 25. All right. That's why I've been, that's why the internet's been saying words, pronouncing words that start with a Y with one syllable differently, like songs that I know very well. They'd say you, but it, the song says you. They'd say you, which is the number 25 because it's the 25th letter of the alphabet, Y with one syllable. Z with one syllable would be 26. 27 would be A with two syllables. So that's it right there. I've been seeing S's and hearing S's and word, like 
Words that start with an S with one syllable, which would be number 19, S-T, T is 20. 19. That's how many days I've gone without water. I just realized that just now. This has been going on for days, like a week probably. And then I've, at the same time for the last seven days or so, I've been hear, hearing wise, you, yearn, yards, you know, why with one syllable. That's all the number 25. If you like, and I look, I look at the clock just now as I'm recording 3.22 p.m. Friday, September 6th. For the last seven days, those were the two numbers that I've been seeing. And I've been wondering, I'm like, why the fuck do I keep seeing? Why? Are they trying to tell me the numbers for the lottery? <laughs> Wrong again. Let's see what you've won this time. Oh, yes. You're just going to continue on a uh, lonely uh, despair of... Uh, Pitiful existence, if you could even call it that. She just mope around the apartment all day. Stare out the window sometimes. Cut your hair every day, because that, cause that matters. And you refrain from the internet as much as possible, for the most part, unless I want to do fake research. And that's what you're going to be doing again for the next few days. You may think that something uh, is around the corner. Think again. You know, I haven't ever bought a lottery ticket from the winner's corner here in Newport, Minnesota. Like it matters where you buy the ticket. It really shouldn't, should it? It's a lottery ticket. It's luck of the draw, bitch. But no, yeah, for the last seven days, that's what's been happening. 19 and 25. Which, of course, if you add 19 plus 25, what do we get? 44. So it seems the future timeline theory mixed with precognition from a fake coma dream and the fake simulation is still in effect pretty uh, significantly. I'm still here, so I'm still going to talk about it. This is America. I'm going to exercise my First Amendment rights. I don't see a single thing wrong with talking about the truth, God. The truth will set you free, right? Lying is bad. Joking is good. Joshing around with the pals. You know, the pals that you thought you knew or whatever. But no, the SIM card grew in size. So it doesn't even fit in the tray when I try to slide it in back into the phone. The same phone, same tray. It's the same SIM card. It, it has the same, it's the same color. It looks the same. It's just bigger. Just a little bit too big to the point where it can't fit in the tray. But it, it came from that phone. I'm not even, this is not a joke. You understand me? I wish I was kidding. It It's like, a, I don't know if anybody's seen the Ant-Man movies or Captain America Civil Wars when uh, they all fight each other or whatever. But Ant-Man, he has like this like weird device where if you throw like a, like a Hot Wheels like car at this fucking portal, it'll, like if you hit it, accurately it turns into a life like 
a, like a life-size car or like an 18-wheeler. It's like that, but, you know, like a millimeter or two bigger. So about the size of my penis, soft. Anywho. Huh. Interesting. I hope that bit and that story about the lottery from episode 25 of my show. Yes, it's the Because podcast is my podcast. I don't know if AI has gone haywire and God has taken a vacation and Jesus is uh, checked out or he's checked in to rehab. Some rehabs, some impatience to let you have a cell phone. If you, good. If you know, if you treat the staff right and you get the privileges, you level up, you tear up. They let you have a, a tablet for an hour every day, so you can listen to the Because podcast, and you can uh, do a nice Google search about uh, how to minimize the size of. Reduce the size of uh, SIM cards back to their normal size. They detoxed him. He flushed his system. He's all good. He was struggling there for a while. They had to put him in like a medically induced coma. Because of the withdrawal from alcohol. When you're... When you're when your blood is wine, like, you're gonna, you can't just, you can't, it's impossible to go cold turkey. You literally have to, it's like drinking like a 175 every hour. 24 hours a day for like eight years. So... When you decide, when you decide to <clears throat> roll out of your bed and uh, somehow like crawl to the door and uh, get yourself uh, somewhat like slouched over on the bathroom countertop, and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're smoking a cigarette with a dip in, and you're vaping at the same time. And you're like, "What the fuck?" Why do I do this to myself? Why did I have to say that? Blood is wine. Why would I? It was. I wasn't serious. I was kidding. Kinda. I just thought it'd be kind of funny and cool to see if I could drink my blood and get drunk. Why did I say that? He just fucking passes out, snaps his neck on the bathroom countertop. Because he has granite, obviously. He's Jesus. Anybody know how to spell Jesus? J E S U S? Why is it, why is it uh, in America, in the United States, pronounced Jesus? Like, it starts with a G. Wouldn't it be Jesus? J, 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 Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Why is it Jesus? It doesn't really make sense, does it? Let's try to think of other words that start with a J or a G. There are two syllables. Um, 
Jamoke. Jabril. See, it's J, J, not G. I guess it's J, E. So let's try to find another J, E. Jester. It's not Jester. 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 Yeah, you don't say Jester because that's retarded. It's spelled J E S T E R. Jester. So why is it pronounced Jesus? I'm not hating on you, dog. I'm not. I'm really, really not. I'm just, you know, questioning the authenticity of the pronunciation in the English language. Let's try to think of another one. Jeepers. J E E P P E R S. So that one's the same as Jesus. Jeepers. But that's with two E's. So that makes sense. Jeepers. It only sounds like a G in the English language if there's two E's. Even like gypsy. Oh, that's a G, my bad. Um, Jamalk. I, I don't, I can't think of one. That was the first one I thought of when I tried to think of another one. I'm like, oh, I'm a, that's a funny word. Jewish. Now that's one that should be G Jewish. If it's Jesus, it should be Jewish. Right? J E S U S. Jesus. J E W I S H. Jewish. So it should be G Jesus. 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 It should be Jesus. That's what it should be. But are there any words pronounced like that? Jesus. 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 Not Jesus. It should be Jewish. Maybe it's because of the S in the middle? I need to get high. I need to. I just need to. Sorry, folks. Some of you may not condone. Well, guess what? I don't give a fuck. Life ain't, uh... What am I... Have I seen the light yet? No, but I haven't really gone to sleep yet because I... This world, like, gave me insomnia. So, yeah. I'm gonna go see if the neighbors have any drugs I can smoke.